All right, uh, welcome to part, uh, well, day three of this build. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to an MVP as fast as possible, a very, very basic version, even though it'll be crude. And then we'll be adding some uh, finer touches uh, throughout the uh, throughout the, the video series. So what do we have to do to get this basic version working? Well, first things first is that the, the the users have to be able to create a product, right? So if you look at Gumroad, um, Gumroad is quite um, quite refined. So for example, you can create a new product, but you can have different types of products. So what we'll do is uh, we'll create a, a digital, we'll allow the user to just have a digital product rather than a, a subscription. I'm looking at this and I think uh, this type thing is really just for categorization. I don't think, uh, I don't think there's any particular like difference. So if I look, make an audiobook for ten dollars and I go to customize, um, it doesn't seem like there's anything different than when I, you know, when I create like a simple digital digital product. So. Um, well, this one was a sample, so I'm just gonna delete this. So, but I'm guessing that in the back end for something like a membership, like a monthly membership, uh, there would be, um, you know, quite a bit of a difference. And also for podcasts and newsletters as well. I'm guessing if I do like a new newsletter uh, and I go $10 a month, you can see that now it's $10 a month. Uh, but if I go to customize, um, I guess if it's a news feed, um, you can, you know, send out newsletters throughout, um, you know, send out newsletters, right? So it looks like, so to start, what I want to do is I want to create a digital product, just, just something very simple, because we do have to get, uh, we do have to get started. Um, and just pondering, thinking too much on how we're going to do the implementation. I think it's not the best use of time. So let's, let's actually get started on making a product. So I think in the last video, we already going to check out a new branch. We already created the product model and, um, we created price sense here. Uh, so one thing I want to do is I do want to, like, if you look at my products and we go to something like Instagram clone with, uh, Ruby on rails, you can see that there is this slug, right? So this is essentially like a short name for the product. Um, so what I want to do is I want to say, I want to, I want to add a column so that we can have this friendly, I mean, you can call this a slug, a short name, whatever you call it. I want to add this ability to our products table and then be able to create the products because essentially when we create the product, we want the user to be either be able to customize this or, uh, automate this. So uh, I'm gonna, there's a gem called friendly slug uh, or friendly slug gem uh, or friendly ID. And this is essentially, this essentially automates the uh, slug creation process. So with friendly ID, it says it's easy to make your applications use URLs like this instead of this. And this is a pretty old gem and I think pretty well maintained. Uh, so I think it's safe to use it. Uh, and it looks like the way we use it is you essentially add the gem, uh, and then you add the column to whatever table you want to add the slug to. And if you add this, um, I think it automatically takes the name and makes a slug version of that. So uh, now, um, I think you can also set your own slugs. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say, we'll just first start by adding the gem. 
so the friendly ID will be here. We'll bundle that right now and we'll say bundle exec Rails G migration add slug to products. And we'll say slug unique. And I think we also want to index this. Slug unique tree. Yeah, this is an unique index. And then we'll run the migration. And then in the product model, we'll say, we'll add the extend friendly ID. And then we'll say friendly ID use name and use slug and actually name by use remember correctly, it is a column in the products table. So that should work. And now what I want to do is I want to create a controller called products and this we don't need the helpers again here i mean it's not really necessary so we'll just delete these and we'll start up the server again and in our tiny cell what we'll do is we'll go to our routes file and we'll have the products resources. For now, we'll only have uh, new. And create. Now, one thing I'm curious about is, yeah, I kind of don't, I don't want it to be nested at all actually. I was thinking about maybe doing, you know, something like this, but for the actual index new and create, I want it to be a top level resource because this products controller, um, we're not gonna be able to Do we want it to be? Yeah, I mean, this it's fine like this before action. Because um, I was thinking that in the future, we'll add something like this discover thing. Uh, but really, um, I think this is we're thinking a little too far into the future. So we'll just keep it. Um, simple and we'll for now we'll keep the products controller at the top level so we'll call it authenticate user and we'll have the routes that we need to get this started and in the products uh, view uh, in the products view folder we'll create um, index.html and in the dashboard index uh, for the products link, we got two versions. So what we'll do is we'll say link to products path and we'll give it, we'll just copy and paste the appropriate classes. copy this inside and we'll do the same for the other link right here. So we'll say link to products path to like this and
this and we'll come here and we'll see that our products uh, page is indeed working yep like this same thing all right, cool. So I'm going to start getting rid of some of our links here because I don't think we'll, I think we're just keeping them around for no reason. So I'm going to get rid of the teams, team link, because I mean, we don't, I don't think we'll have a concept called team. Um, we'll get rid of documents because we don't need that. And we'll get rid, also while we're at it, we'll get rid of um, reports. Okay, cool. Um, we also don't need any of this. I don't think so for now. Uh, but we'll, yeah, we'll get rid of the hero icons and all this junk while we're at it. We can always add it back later when our app becomes more sophisticated. All right, so uh, one thing I noticed is you can see that when we drill into products, uh, there's nothing here. And that's because uh, if you look here, that's because in the dashboard is where our sidebar is at. And if you, yeah, dashboard is where we're, where our sidebar is at and our content is yielding here. So what I want to do here is I want to say, I want to start organizing our layout. So if you look here, we'll say, we'll just yield normally if we're not signed in, but if we're signed in, if we're not signed in, then we'll yield normally. And if we're signed in, then I want to, um, render out this render will have a parent div and then we'll render out layouts side nav like this and then will yield like this. Um, also here we'll say, we'll say H full and background gray 50. If device controller or, cause if it's a device controller, then the user is, a user is either trying to register or log in, or if the user is signed in like this. There we go. And now we'll create layouts side nav html.erb and we'll open up the side nav html.erb and then we'll copy and paste the entirety of the sidebar, which is I think all of this. Basically everything that's not that's not main. So we'll be copying all of that into the side nav. And then the main, what we'll do is in the layout, we'll yield out the content like, like this. This way, we don't need uh, Okay, hold on. So actually, let me look at Tailwind UI, go to components and look at registration and look at these, get this what we do. Uh, the HTML class needs to be background gray. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll 
add this up here and then on the body it'll just be full like that all right cool so now it's looking pretty good um, if we go to okay, so that doesn't look very good I think it's because the dashboard index still have all of this and there we go this is looking a lot better all right cool so um, now in our side nav uh, what I want to do is I want to start highlighting because I mean if you look at right now even if we're in the products link uh, the dashboard is highlighted so what I want to do is I want to create a helper a helper method to highlight the correct link so first I want to replace this here let's say link to root path class or link to dashboard path class and I'm gonna copy and paste all the, the classes and copy and paste this SVG. And it looks like this is the class for, for active. Okay, cool, that's, that's good to know. Um, and I'm gonna do the same for here. I'm gonna say dashboard path. and paste in this here open up the block and paste in all of this like this and actually now what i want to do is i want to look at uh, i want to create a new helper method called side nav helper and it's just a module, right? Side nav helper. And I want to say link active. And I want to say this would be we'll say controller name link name we'll say return if it's that then we'll return this if not then we'll return this and we'll use that actually we'll say active link I'll keep it link active and we'll say we'll call that method and we'll here we'll put in dashboard and we'll do the same for products but this will be products So essentially uh, what's happening here is uh, we created a link active method we're comparing the cur current controller current controller name with 
the parameter that we're passing in. So for example, for dashboard, we're passing in this dashboard here, right? Uh, and because when we're in dashboard, we are, because we're in dashboard, we're calling, we're rendering the template from the dashboard controller. So we're saying, hey, does dashboard controller name equal to this dashboard string parameter that we're passing in? If, it, if so, then, it, then it's currently the active link. If not, then return the, the inactive. Um, styling. So now we're currently we're currently in dashboard. So dashboard is highlighted, but if we go to products, then products is highlighted. But it looks like um, it looks like this SVG uh, is like this. Ah, okay. So what we do is desktop link active. We'll need two methods. We'll say mobile link active. And we'll also say SVG active. Because it looks like Because it looks like um, if the link is active, the SVG, the text is set, the text class is set to text indigo 600. So we also have to set it for the SVG as well. Uh, so otherwise, it's it looks like it's this whole text gray group hover thing that they have going on here. So for now, what I want to do is I first I want to set the uh, the link active thing for. Yeah, we'll call, we're gonna call this desktop link active desktop link active and also the same here and i want to double check text grade 400 text grade 4 okay so that style is correct so for here what i want to do is Uh, okay, so the active link styling is actually exactly the same uh, for mobile as well. So really, we don't need separate methods for mobile or desktop. We just need one. So we'll call it link active. So I'm going to rename this method call to just regular link active like this. And here we'll do the same. We'll say link active. Dashboard, get rid of, and here as well. Get rid of this, and. For SVG link active, we'll say if controller name is link name, uh, then return text indigo 600. Otherwise, return this whole thing with the hover classes here. So here what we'll do is SVG link active why does this look completely wrong ah no i need um i need to do it this way This and the same as well down here. The, the reason I have to do it this way is because why I have to open up uh, ERB, uh, this hash rocket thing, 
is because this is regular HTML. So this is the way you open up uh, Ruby code within regular HTML. And this link to is um, the Ruby method because we already opened it up here. So in here, we just open it up with the pound and the curly braces, kind of like when you try to interpolate a string. All right, cool. And I think we have, well, here down here is supposed to be products. And then we do the same for here. Strictly dashboard. And the same for here. Should be products. And now you can see that things are working indeed correctly. Perfect. Let's actually check the mobile version as well. And yeah, things are working correctly. We'll, we'll implement this thing later. Um, I'm not sure if I, I wanna get to a, a working version uh, first, like a very, very crude working version. So here, now what I wanna do is I want to um, create a, a new HTML.erb template and in the products index HTML, I'll just create a new link that says add a new product. And here we'll say new product path and we'll say link like this. And once we click this, we'll go to the products new route and here, uh, what we'll do is we'll say, hello world from new product. Just to make sure that it is routing correctly. And actually before we continue, this is something I wanna get going, which is writing some specs. So we'll have describe get index and describe get new. And we'll have a new pending one. That's basically describe um, pending describe uh, post create like this. Uh, something like this. So here, what I want to do is before because the user has to be signed in. Uh, before they get to hit the products controller, I'm gonna sign in the user first, and I'm gonna just write some basic, very basic specs. So get index, it succeeds, so we'll say get products path, expect response to have HTTP status, success, and get new, it succeeds get new product path, expect response to have the status success. Let's see what that looks like. We'll run some specs. And yeah, everything is running properly because we only have one pending spec is creating a new product and here we'll just uh, open up Tailwind UI again and then we'll uh, look at some forms for creating uh, for, for creation so we'll look at some form layouts and I think one thing we can use is well this is nice uh, but is it necessary that's the, that's the thing is it necessary? I don't think so. Uh, I think we'll use, I think this is, I think this is uh, okay. So we'll use two columns with cards. Yeah, we'll use two columns with cards. So we'll copy, we'll copy this. Well, just a copy.
copy button, paste that directly in. And we'll reload and see what this looks like. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll get rid of unnecessary things like, I don't know, this section, personal. We'll, keep the, we'll use the personal information section because I don't think we need um, the website. We don't need any of this. We just need, we don't need a notification section. We don't need this section here. We also don't need the first section, which is um, this one. Yeah, we don't need this. So we'll just stick with just the personal information. And here what we'll say is uh, create, create a new product. And maybe we'll say uh, we'll just copy some of this text. Why not? Make some selections, fill in some boxes, and go live in minutes. Perfect. I don't really have a help center right now, so I'm not going to have that. Uh, and here, what we'll say is we'll say form with uh, and in the new products controller, we'll just instantiate a new product well, current user products new or build and here we'll say form with product and we'll add these classes And we'll pass paste in all of this, all of this stuff inside our form with block. And we'll see what that looks like. And that is not looking good. I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, form with, ah, it's form with uh, model. And that is, that's looking better. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start replacing all of this with the Ruby methods so that it works with the, with the form with helper. And this one is F text fields. And the class. Like this. And we'll continue on. Like this. No, it's not lasting. It's not lasting that we have to add. What do we have to add? Have to add um, actually just the price. Can I add currency? What happens here if we just add select? I like okay that is what uh, okay that's one thing in Gumroad that I just realized that I think is kind of cool um, I don't know if it was intentional 
or if it's a bug, but it looks like you can create a product even if you enter in gibberish in the price section, which is unexpected. Uh, so I was thinking about whether to add, you know, an actual, you know, make this input field into a number field so that they have to add a price or, but now that I think about it, the way Gumroad does it is um, they seem, it seems like they allow users to, they make it hassle free to add a product. Uh, so they don't have, you know, validations here except the name and the product type. But since I don't have a product type right now, I think what I'll do is I'll just have a price field and in the placeholder, I'll say um, price your product and I'll add the class like normal and F label, it should be price and actually, yeah, it's just price. Actually, if I look at Rails console, I don't have any products, right? So I can't, I can't see if the, the method price works, but essentially looking at this now, I don't think I need any of this. So, ah, okay, so I got name and the price are in two separate columns. So I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna keep it full width. So the street address section, this is, this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna say, I'm gonna copy and paste. Ah, actually, we'll just, we'll just keep it like this. We'll say, we'll have two street address sections. And here, I'll just open up another new label tag. I'll say name. I'll copy the class here. And same here as well, text field name. Just wanna... Cool, all right. And we'll do the same for down here, except this will be for price, right? the whole thing and same here which is supposed to be f label same here as well and here i'll say placeholder product and i'll copy and paste all of the required classes like this and get rid of the necessary label. And I'm gonna get rid of all of the, the inputs that are not necessary. So it's from down here. None of this is necessary. And none of this is necessary either. So we'll see how much we can get rid of. So if we do that, things are looking, I mean, obviously Gumroad looks better because it's a, it's a more polished product, but hey, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll design things as we go, okay? I mean, this definitely doesn't look as professional as Gumroad. It looks actually quite, looks actually quite um, bootstrappy, a little boring, but you can't get the product right the first time. Um, you usually have to modify things as you go. All right, so uh, with that, what we'll do is we'll get to products and we'll try to create a simple product. And we're gonna permit name and um, we're gonna permit name and the price. Jeff is sighing right now because he's, he's bored. Um, 
and we'll say in the product will create new product and actually we'll say product params dot merge with a current user we'll say if product is safe um, we'll say redirect to product path which I guess we haven't added so let's add that route that will add the show route and if not we'll have to have some sort of error state here okay so here we'll say what product should we upload Air, airbnb clone and this will be what twelve dollars click save and it looks like We did indeed create a new product. Yeah, we did. Fortunately, like this isn't doesn't seem like this is loading, and it's because I think we're trying to create it with the uh, Turbo Stream, um, and so we have to look up how Turbo Links works. So, or the new Turbo works. I never really use that. Um, too extensively so it's not really in my head right now but we're gonna try to take advantage of uh of of turbo of hotwire and try to make this app kind of like as modern as uh possible so like if you look at the the logs it looks like we try to create as turbo stream we create the product and then we redirect it to products Airbnb clone uh, and but yeah it didn't it didn't um, didn't create anything yeah it's a it's a little bit weird uh, but we'll we'll go with this uh, before we I have dinner coming up soon, so I do have to leave uh, soon. So I don't think I can continue too deep into this. But uh, before I close out the video, what I do want to do is I want to create the, I want to write at least one spec. So here I'll say it's um, valid params and here we'll say it succeeds say uh, post product path say expect to say name new product name and we'll say price one two three or hello world and here we'll say expect that to change product count by one and expect the response to have http status redirect if we run those specs I think it should. Oh, okay, it's actually post products path. It failed, but because I put the, the route incorrect. And it looks like prime is missing. Ah, it's because I have to nest this inside the product param like this. I do that. Everything doesn't pass. Um, why doesn't it pass? I put binding pry in there because ah, it has to be a number. Um, how about we do this? I think it's because 
So what's happening is because I have um, products, because I'm using uh, the Money Rails gem, I can't save. Uh, I can't save non-number values into into the products table. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say um, products. I'm gonna say. Um, if product dot price unless unless product no I want to say unless product dot price is um Integer. No, if product price is a string, then product price zero. Just set it to zero, and then we'll try to to save. And it's still not working. I don't really know why, because binding pry. Okay, hold on. but it is a zero. Type is not a number. Allow nil. Ah, I think I can, I'll have to allow nil here. Hold on, so I'm gonna look up the Money Rails gem documentation and Gonna have to be, I'm gonna have to say allow nil true. Right. Like that. And now I'm gonna try to run the specs. And here, what I'll say is if prices, maybe I'm, it's not going into here. Uh, it's not. So I'm gonna run binding pry here. And if I look at price, um, I think what I have to do here is product params. merge like that and hmm, basically I want the price to be actually nil so how about we do okay return product Params if it's defined. I will say Params product price nil if product if Params product price is a string. And actually we'll say params product delete price if it is a string. And then we'll call this. And if we do it that way, I think everything will Pass. Yes, it does. All right, cool. Um,
Let's say valid, before I close, I wanna say valid params with price as string. I also wanna say valid params with price as price as number. So if we pass in, I don't know, $12.24 into price, I want product class to price price to s to equal 1224 like this. I want to see if that if those specs pass. Ah, okay, hold on. If because there'll always be a string. So basically if price the thing is if we add what does that return? Ah So what we'll say is 2s zero if it's not or 2i so what I wanted it looks like whenever you down case whenever you make an integer into a string it does come out as zero so instead of checking for a string what we want to do is um, hold on. 1224 2i. Uh, if, if it's zero. Looks like whenever you convert. Um, like actual strings uh, into like a number value, it comes out as, it comes to zero. So what I wanna do here is I wanna say, take the price params and then call to float on it and then check to see if it's zero. Then uh, check um, if the price has been saved correctly. Maybe there is a better way of doing this, but in a hurry, this is the best, it's the only way I can think of. Maybe I'll revisit this, but I just wanna make this uh, work for now. So right now, everything is working. It looks like everything is passing, and we actually do have um, a new product that is saved into the database. Un unfortunately, it's not, it's not really um, redirecting properly, but that's probably due to the way I'm using uh, Turbo. So I'm gonna, in the next video, I'm gonna make that, uh, I'm gonna make that work uh, so that we can uh, create products and also um, customize it. So like if I go to my Airbnb clone, I go to content so that I can, um, you know, get these things pretty much set up. So, uh, you know, if you enjoy these videos, definitely subscribe and like the video. And um, hopefully y'all are enjoying this and stay tuned for the next ones. All right, thanks.